So now we're going to take a look at the foreign affairs under the Clinton administration. There were numerous military entanglements during Clinton's two terms to despite the end of the Cold War. And we'll start with an incident that be, simply became known as, uh, more commonly as Black Hawk Down. Uh, it, that also becomes the inspiration uh, of a book. Uh, the, the book becomes the inspiration for, for a well-known Hollywood movie uh, titled Black Hawk Down. Uh, but it was also known as the Battle of Mogadishu. And so what happened is, is between October 3rd and 4th, 1993, in Mogadishu, Somalia, U.S. forces fought against Somali militia fighters. Now, they went in basically to take out a warlord known as Mohammed Farah Aidid, um, and ultimately they end up engaging in a street battle. Two U.S. Black Hawk helicopters are shot down by rocket-propelled uh, grenades, leaving soldiers trapped behind enemy lines. They have to try to fight their way out. Uh, it, this results in a big urban battle that killed 18 American soldiers and wounded 73 others. Uh, some of the American soldiers, their bodies were drugged through the streets. Uh, the whole thing becomes quite a fiasco and it really makes many Americans fearful of, of committing our troops into any f other foreign entanglements. Uh, but there were more. Another one was Bosnia. Uh, ethnic conflict in Bosnia led to led the U.S. and NATO to hit Bosnian Serb targets. Clinton sent a U.S. peacekeeping force to Bosnia in 1995 to uphold the Dayton Accords. And we also had entanglements in Afghanistan and Sudan in response to Al-Qaeda bombings of the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. Clinton ordered missile strikes against suspected terrorist targets in Afghanistan and Sudan. Now, it just so happens that right about the same time that a lot of this was coming forth, uh, we also had the Clinton scandal was, was taking place, and there were some critics who suggested that this may, may be what they call a, a wag the dog scenario, where possibly Clinton was trying to build uh, some kind of fake crisis to divert attention away from his own scandals. And possibly that may have played a role in the fact that uh, we really didn't go after Osama bin Laden as aggressively as we could have uh, in the Clinton years. Clinton kind of scaled things back. Uh, but by this point in time, you know, um, bin Laden's really becoming enemy number one. He already had tried to carry out a bombing of the World Trade Center uh, during the Clinton administration. That one really largely failed, although they did have a, an explosion uh, in, in, a, in, a, in an underground garage beneath one of the Twin Towers, and it did do some damage, uh, you know, and, and it, was, it was very minor by comparison to the September 11th attacks, but once again, it did kind of catch our attention. Obviously, these, these embassy bombing, bombings in Kem, Kenya and Tanzania also catch our attention. Uh, we also were involved, once again, in Yugoslavia, kind of related to the, the Bosnia conflict as well, to stop ethnic cleansing, which is basically genocide, uh, against Albanians by Serbians. Clinton authorized U.S. support for NATO bombing campaigns in Kosovo. Then Iraq. Uh, Iraq kind of, even though we, we went there, we drove Saddam Hussein's forces out of Iraq, we continued to have very tense relations with the uh, administration of Saddam Hussein in Iraq. Uh, he continued to violate the UN resolutions that ended the war, uh, including sending uh, soldiers into no fly or sending planes up in no fly zones where he wasn't supposed to. He eventually started kicking out weapons, UN weapons inspectors. Uh, there was widespread belief that he was trying to develop nuclear weapons. So, in the 1998 State of the Union Address, Clinton mentioned that Saddam Hussein was trying to develop nuclear weapons. Clinton ordered airstrikes against Iraqi targets in the no-fly zone. And for the last two years of Clinton's presidency, we, we routinely hit targets in the no-fly zone. Uh, now, of course, this is all in, uh, you know, all taking place prior to the administration of George W. Bush who would take office in 2001 and ultimately under his leadership we would go back to war in Iraq in 2003. 
Uh, so there had been some buildup, though, like I said, during the Clinton administration. Uh, also in terms of Clinton's foreign policy, uh, he became really the first president to visit Vietnam since the end of the Vietnam War. And this happens in November of 2000, also the uh, same month as the 2000 presidential election. Uh, so really does this right towards the tail end of his presidency. Uh, overall, Clinton remained very popular, uh, but the Lewinsky scandal did cost him credibility. And as he was preparing to leave office, his vice president, Al Gore, was running for president in the 2000 election against George W. Bush, the son of Clinton's predecessor. We also 